It was Orthodox Christmas, the beginning of 2007. I was drunk. I went into the entrance of the apartment and fell asleep. And I woke up and two guys were beating me. I hopped out into the street, tried to defend myself. They wanted more. They kept beating and beating and kicking, and I fell. And they started kicking me, kicking me, kicking me, and they wanted more. I had a bottle of beer, smashed it open, tried to cut me with it. I stuck out my arm, and uh, you see this. And all of a sudden, a car showed up. A couple of young guys jumped out, started beating them up. One guy ran away, the other one they beat almost to death. I was covered in blood. They threw me in the car and took me to the hospital. The car was all covered in blood. They understood that I was homeless. They gave me money. All of this happened in the space of about 15 minutes. This is a nice square in St. Petersburg. If you come to this city, you will most likely be here because it is located in the center. And also, you can see here a lot of uh, homeless people. Homeless, it sounds in Russian bezdomny. It is actually official word using by media and official people. But majority of Russian use word bombsh. And it is actually a derogatory term. Homeless people in Russia are untouchable because uh, there are stereotypes. They all seek tuberculosis, have a lies, stay drunk and drug addict. People think like that. And social charity support for homeless in Russia are more developed and available than government support. Night bus. It is a social project for homeless. Every weekend, the special van sets off to give out free hot meals, toiletries and clean clothes. One Russian homeless care organization, which is called Nachleshka, made this activity. This place it is actually headquarter of uh, uh, this organization. The van is going to the route tonight. And first of all, we need to prepare some stuff. All right, here's some coffee for you. I got a spoon. Or would you rather one single time use? That's okay. Thank you. What is your name? Slava. And yours? I'm Tanya. Nice to meet you. Slava made for me coffee. Bread ladles. Yeah, sliced bread. And pretzels. Yep. Pretzels, snacks, candies. Does this stuff go to the bus? Yep, all goes to the bus. Candy's down there. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to make the tea myself. Mm -hmm. Here we got water warming up. And we'll make the tea and put it on the bus. How long have you been working here? Since June. And before that, what did you do? I was on the street. When the Soviet Union collapsed, I was living in Donbass, worked in a mine. It used to be that where you're registered or you work, you're a citizen of that state. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, I left. I left without anywhere to go. That's why I don't have any passport or registration. Turns out that when the Soviet Union collapsed, my life collapsed at exactly the same time. And your family is there now, or don't you know? Oh yeah, I know where they are. Uh -huh. I have children, they're all grown up, grandchildren all grown up. I have two children in Belarus, because my wife is from there. She's still there. I took one daughter with me when we divorced, and she's 30 years old. Now she's in Russia, living near Murmansk. Mm -hmm. I don't really keep in touch with anybody. A lot of time has passed. They have their families. I don't really get involved. Mm -hmm. I worked in the field, I worked in the building without documents. But I worked. After that I got tuberculosis and cancer. And they had to take out one of my lungs. I couldn't really do any hard labor anymore. I was in the hospital without documents, but I was accepted, thank God. 
People live here. People bring food, bring cereals, pasta, stew. All that they bring, we take it. And naturally, we give it out to the people who live in this shelter. All we got is black. Okay, just one. It is enough. Thank you. Can you carry it yourself? I will waddle somehow. She's got a good spirit. Here we give out clothes. Shampoo, soap, everything you might need. Hello. Tea. Can you warm up here? Yeah. Can people come in here, warm up. Shower room. Can we come in? With camera. Hello? Got a microwave. And they cook right there. Driver Igor and I are going to the restaurant for taking food for today night bus. How do you decide where to distribute food? There is one rule which will never fail you. Get kicked out of one place, go to another. Not all the locals understand us completely. It's not always easy to find a common language with the local administrations and property owners. They might write complaints. They can come and gather, complain, they can start fights. The most common complaint is that it's unsanitary, dangerous for society. All the places where we distribute food are located as far away. In any case, all of our locations are pretty far away from residential areas, businesses, big roads. It's just basic business etiquette. My mom is not entirely aggressive, but she doesn't really understand what I'm doing. See, look at the pension that I've got. You could be helping cats. Look how much time you're spending on your bums. So, she's gotten used to it? Yeah, she's gotten used to it a little bit. She collects stuff. I pass it on. You broke her. I wouldn't say that I broke her. To help those from whom society has turned away, that society hates, that society is afraid of. Not that it's good or that it's bad. I just think that it's the right thing to do. It seems to me that we're not exactly developed or as mature as far as our relationship to homeless people. Civilization just hasn't gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just stuck somewhere on a train. It hasn't arrived yet. We arrived at the place. Ah, they're filming us again. Pardon? You know, nothing's ever really completely deleted from the internet. I won't film you if you don't want me to. That's what they all say. They say it's not going to go anywhere. Next thing you know, on television. There are volunteers and doctors in the team. It is a cold time and that is why hot meals and heating centers are valued. There is no enough food and volunteers figure out how to distribute it. I don't think we are going to have enough. Let's do half portions then. I'm doing my best. Hey, Igor. Here you go. Oh, the soup's good. Take one bowl. Igor, what are you doing? Igor, no, don't. What are you doing? There's not a lot of soup. Look how many people there are. We gotta feed everybody. Homeless people can start trouble themselves or complain to you about small portions. You're like a bunch of little kids. Don't even start. What are you starting for? I don't need your tiny cup of tea. You're just a little punk, you know that? How do you manage a situation like that? That's my direct responsibility. I walk around, talk to different people. 
try to understand the situation. Who's doing what? Who stole what from whom? Who's doing what to other people? Figure out the hierarchy. Who's stronger? Who's weaker? And in collecting all this information, knowing it, I can possibly predict and maybe even change the situation, influence it. And so now I've got a little bit of authority. So do they obey you? I wouldn't say that they obey me, but they listen. Yeah, there's pretty subtle energies here. Sometimes we have to shoot from the hip a little bit. If we establish strict rules, formal rules, it's just going to be awful. If we had some kind of tokens for food, or system of punishment, we're organized so that it's person to person. For example, a drunk man comes up. That happens. Kind of aggressive. Not really entirely sure where he is or what he's doing, what's going on, how to how the line works, hot food, or maybe he's inclined to violent outbursts. What am I supposed to do in a situation like that? What do I do? If we were a formal project, I would just kick him out. I'd take a spoon and a bowl of hot soup and i feed it to him. When a person's eating warm soup, getting some food in him, things get better, feels a little bit better, they can figure out what's going on, where he is, and we can get a dialogue going. I explain to him that we have rules, what they are, why we have them, and how it's all connected with safety, after all. Tea, anyone? I used to be afraid of them. They terrified me. But then I became volunteer and got used to them, and now I don't have the attitude that they are somehow disgusting. It is helpful to see the contrast in the way people live. My colleague and I are medics. He is a doctor, I am a pharmacist. We provide medical care. People come to us, ask about their health. We explain what happened with them. And also we provide medical care based on our medications. It was winter recently and of course it are cold, flu, runny nose. If you've got a specialization, you find a job. But how can you work if you don't live anywhere? You just gotta relax after a long day at work. You gotta sleep, you gotta eat, am I right? I used to work in construction. I was a little bit younger. That's some heavy work. And just sleep right on the site. Is that normal? As a result, you start drinking. And you've got money. But why do you need money? You don't even have a life. Isn't unpleasant for you when you hear the word bombsh? It just hurts the ears. Do you correct people? You know, it depends. It makes sense to correct some people. If you feel that a person really just doesn't know any better. And usually there's a pretty positive response, actually. Sorry, I didn't know. And there are such people that have been raised in such a way that when they use the word bomj, it just shows the level of development of them as a person. Yeah. And it's not my job to try to raise somebody. There's only so much I can do in that situation. Of course there's a desire to eat, a desire to go to the theater. Thank God I'm not an alcoholic. You need to, sometimes. If a friend invites me to his birthday party, for example, offers me a glass of good wine, of course, I'm not going to refuse. Do you want to have a family again? Yeah, of course. Because I never really had one. Like a real family. I just never had one. Of course, there is a family. I have children, I have grandchildren. But 
it's yeah, not good. Yeah. I never really got any happiness out of it. I recently come to an understanding of what happiness is. Everyone's got their own idea, but for me, it's when you're caring for a person that you love, a person that you want. For me, naturally, that's a woman. You care for her from your heart, from your soul, honestly, and it's reciprocated. If it's not reciprocated, it's not happiness. If it is, then it's happiness. That's it.